Hey guys, how's it going? Self lock picker here, and what I have in front of you here is a common security tag that you can find in many things that you buy. But what this is is going to be something that can be quite useful for you in Locksport. When you flip it over around back, what you see is a thin piece of rectangular metal. This metal resembles very strongly to a corsham, which you can see here. What a corsham can do is it can make it so that you can take a lock like this one, you can insert a key blank like this, take the back off, insert the shim through the back, and then it makes it so that you can get the lock open without having the key. Also, it's a really great thing to do in lock sport. When you've picked a lock open, you're not sure what the plug is like, you're not sure if there's any weird T-pens, you just want to be safe. Having a core shim available to you is something that is really good to have. This is going to be a really great method to use in a pinch, and what I'm going to do is hopefully show that to you right now. So, in order to get these core shims out, it is pretty easy. I'm going to turn my pinning tray over upside down, and essentially you just need to cut it out. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a cut going down the length of it, right here. And if you're doing this at home, just be very, very careful that you do not cut yourself. Try to always take safety first and just try not to have any accidents. And then I like to just use a pair of tweezers just so I can start to peel back the plastic. But once you get this open, what you're going to do is you're going to find two little pieces of thin metal which you can use as core shims. This is going to be a pretty cool thing to do just because a lot of people don't necessarily always have access to core shims at home, but a lot of people do have these little security tags hanging around and they often just end up in the trash. So when you want to do this, you just need to be a little bit cognizant that you don't bend them. So you just got to be careful as you're peeling it back. And all you need to do is just do the absolute best that you can. So I'm going to try to separate this first core shim from the plastic. In this circumstance, for me, it is really adhering. So I'm going to try my best to get that one free. And then I have my second one, which looks like it's under a second layer. So I'm going to try to free this one up. And then we'll have our two core shims ready to go. All right, so the second one is about to be freed. All right, so I have two right here, and this is potentially a third one. If I want to try to get all of the stickiness off the back, but for right now, I'm going to just leave that one off to the side. So when we take a look at these core shims compared to a commercially available one, the first thing you may notice is, is that the ones from the security tags are much thinner. It might be hard to see in the video, but they are a lot more flimsy compared to the commercial available one. So just so you can draw your own conclusions, I'm going to measure out the one we just extracted right here. And you can see the measurement we're getting. And now I'm going to take out the commercial one. Now it does have a little concave to it, so the reading may not be perfectly accurate. But that is what we're getting right here. But either way, you can tell that it's a little bit thicker. So one thing that is really helpful in lock sport is when you have your lock picked open like this, you have the core turned over. Sometimes you want to insert a core shim just to protect the pinning because sometimes you can get pens snugged up when you're trying to remove the plug and that can cause a lot of issues and you just want to be safe. So it is often a pretty good practice to just take a core shim and what you're going to do is you're just going to stick it between the plug and the driver pins and all you need to do is just slide it all the way back and this does an excellent job at that. Where these little core shims do fall apart and strength and usability is they're not very durable. So if you wanted to try to use one to properly decode a lock, 
Um, when I mean decode, I mean when you want a shim lock open and you do not have the key, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a key blank like this. And if you want to see a video on how to do this, I'll link it up here as well. But what you do is you take your core shim, you're going to align it between the plug and the driver pins, and you're going to start to scoot it back as far as you can. And then once it's all the way back, you're going to have your key blank all the way in. You're just going to keep pushing and start to withdraw your key blank little by little. And what you're doing is you're wedging between the key pins and the driver pins, and you're making a little gap so that once you get all the way across, nothing is going to actually be blocking plug rotation because the core shim is going to be essentially making a shear line for you, and then you'll be able to get the lock opened up. And when I first mentioned this, I used the word decoding. What's a really powerful thing to do once you get the lock open is you can take the caliper that I used a few minutes ago, you can measure out the key pin lengths, then you can match those up on a chart, and then you can actually see what the key to your lock is actually going to be. And then you can essentially have decoded the lock, make a key to it, and you can bring a lot of life back to your lock, or also you can just rekey it in general. But as you can tell, I'm almost there. This is a lot harder to do with these little thin core shims, and they certainly aren't going to have a lot of life left in them after this use compared to the commercial ones. Now I have bent the shim, and this is one of the big downfalls of these, is that they are just so, so fragile. Now, what I'm going to do is let's start over and let's use the other shim and see if we're able to get this to open up. So I do want to say that this is great that we did have a failure because we learned through our failures and this is a great example of just the real world of how this method really works. I don't want to put up a video saying that this is the only way you need to do this, this is the best way to do it. I want to just let you know that this is a way to do it, and this is a way that you can actually have a lot of success, but it's certainly not going to be the easiest way. And as you can tell, I have now turned the lock over because we have now shimmed between the key pen and the driver pen. So I just want to say that this is a really cool thing to do. You're able to get core shims right out of one of these security tags if you're ever in a bind. This is something that you can consider doing. But either way guys, this is all that I have for you today. If you have any questions or suggestions, as always, please leave it in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for checking this out and I hope you all have a great day and I cannot wait to see you in the next video.